yes. investors should buy real assets from wine to art as inflation reaches a secular turning point, Bank of America says. A story by Business Insider. Since the election of President Joe Biden, inflation and its potential comeback has been a hot economic topic. Pumping trillions of dollars into the economy could overheat, critics say, while others see few signs of runway inflation either now or near future. Bank of America chief investment strategist Michael Hartnett has seen enough to declare a, a secular turning point on inflation and anticipates that stock market returns will be lackluster over the next decade. Let me read that one more time. This is not an employee at Bank of America. This is not a director. This is not an advisor. This is not an accountant. This is the chief investment strategist, Michael Hartnett, has seen enough to declare a secular turning point on inflation anticipates that stock market returns will be lackluster over the next decade. Stock investors who've seen a roughly 10% annual return from recent de- decades should expect that gain to go down to 3 to 5% over the course of 2020s, he added. But he has a recommendation. Buy real assets such as real estate, commodities, and even collectibles like wine, art, diamonds, cars could outperform in the next decade. You know what this is? This is collectibles. Mm-hmm. These are things that you cannot right. duplicate. You cannot get another Grace Kelly PSA 10 1955 card. You can't duplicate these things, right? The chance of that happening is slim to none. So investors don't need to own the physical assets, Hartnett added, but instead can own REITs, real estate investment trusts, and specialized funds that focus on these assets. So he's, he's saying the next decade, if you read it right, land is going to go up, real estate is going to go up. Anything that you can just print is going to go up. Tom, I'm going to go to you uh, first on this story. What are your thoughts? Um, Do you agree with them? Okay. B of A is alter ego in the investment banking world on Wall Street is? Goldman. Mer- Merrill Lynch. Yeah, Merrill Lynch, yeah. yeah. Yep. So That's right. They bought them out like in, in 11 correct. years ago, 10 and it's years like, ago. And it just so happens we have a REIT and a specialized fund that we could help you out with this. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of retail sale here going on, but I, I think he's right because he's, he's describing a simple analysis. If inflation goes up and these returns go to 3 to 5 over here, then your return could be, you know, 10% over here. I think that's a really sliver of a, of a gap there, but you know, I, I don't disagree with it. And I think with inflation, I think you know, the collectibles that are not in infinite supply, I think that works. I, you know, it's an, I think it's a valid investment strategy, but it's one of many strategies. Yeah, I think um, I'll take this with a grain of salt. This is one guy. There's going to be other analysts that are right. going to say, put your money in the stock market. Are you crazy? This is... So I think the, the a couple key lessons for all our friends out there watching this is, number one, diversification. Mm-hmm. So should mm-hmm. you be in the stock market? A resounding yes. Should you have all your money in the stock market? Maybe not. Maybe you should diversify and have some REITs. Like, for instance, I'm very big. I rent. I think I've been very vocal about that. I don't buy houses. I just kind of keep it moving, and I'm very flexible, and I move from Miami to Boca to Dallas. But it's a lifestyle choice. It's a lifestyle choice. Obviously, when I have kids and I settle down, it's a different story. But I might even still rent at that point. Sure. But I'm all in on the stock market, and things have done very well over the last decade and and change. Um, But should you put a a sliver of your money in REITs? Maybe 10%. Sure. Should you put 10% of your 5 to 10% of your assets into crypto? Sure. But the bulk of it should be in the stock market, in my opinion, whether it's a 401k, bulk Roth of IRA. it should be in the stock market. I think so, yes. I think mm-hmm. so, yes. Because, again, for building the average wealth, investor. Yes. Or even the, I mean, for everyone. But, like, don't forget, building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint. We talked about the 18 year old getting yep. into debt, yes. and trying to get rich quick. And then I think it worked out pretty well for you. Um, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. The, the goal, if you're 18 or 21 or 25, is to get rich by 30. It's to I, I just think an 18 year old can take a lot more risk. Well, clearly yeah, you, you should. You, you, the no, risk exactly tolerance right. for an 18, 19, 20 year old is like. Well, you can bounce back a lot easier. Yeah. That's why they say that if you're just 80, not the dumb big mistake. Well, not you debt. Cannot, not, not going backwards. No, not well. I got into debt forty nine thousand. I mean, I was into debt nonstop. Is what I was into. So, but what I'm saying to you is not the dumb mistake. You can't make right. the dumb mistake. The dumb mistake is. You get caught something that you know gets you a felony or something yeah. that hurts you to go into a business or your record, things like that. Mm-hmm. All the other mistakes, you can lose all the money in the world if you're yeah. younger. Not all the money in the world, but you can lose some money because you can recover from it. Of course, but but, the, but you're saying like getting arrested, having, no, having no, a no, mark no, on your record, not, like, like that, selling that selling crazy. you know drugs just to make money. No, and no, you no, get, no, no. I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about play that. the long game yeah. with that. So I don't want anybody quote me and say Pat, you said. 
anything to take the risk. Here, I'm not saying that. Here's my last point. I, be, I believe in something called the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. So look, we've talked, I sort of the theme of this podcast so far is do your research, you know, find out what's going on out there. So they're giving you a lot of recommendations of where you can kind of put your money, whether it's real estate, commodities, collectibles, wine, art, diamonds. Like, I don't know anything about wine other than if I'm going to have a glass of dinner, yeah, I'll take the cab. Cool. I'm not going to become a wine investor. I don't know anything about art. I'm not going to become an art investor. So I do know about basketball. I do know about the NBA. So yeah, I'd put 10 grand on a Zion Williamson card because I understand that marketplace. I understand hard assets like real estate, but I'm not trying to buy a property. So that's why I'm a big advocate of REITs, Real Estate Investment mm -hmm. Trust, for people out, th out there that aren't familiar with, with that. But diversify, but I would say, regardless of your age, 50%. If not more of your but, but core you, asset you allocation about? should you, be in the S and P five hundred. This guy is telling you to to, look, you know how you say, hey, you know that what he's doing is he's selling because it's Merrill Lynch and all that, right? Okay, let's just say yes, he mm -hmm. is. But but Tom, I think he's observing it, and selling. But but I think if you read it, the guy says real a, real real assets such as real estate, commodities, mm -hmm. and even collectibles like wine, art, diamonds, and car could outperform outperform in the next decade. Those are none of the products he sells. Mm -hmm. If you like, he's not selling wine. He's not selling art. He's not selling diamonds. He's not selling cars. That's not what B of A specializes in. Correct. He is selling, not selling away. It's a yeah. bad term for the financial industry, but he's selling yeah. to a different direction. Mm -hmm. And imagine if you're one of his advisors and you're sitting there saying, why, why are you as a chief investment strategist talking about buying what I can't make money on? How do you want me to make commissions so I can get your money back to you? You think he's so, facing backlash? No, what I'm saying is I like his honesty. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that he's – because most of the time when you hear, like, I, I go to, you know, these events with Goldman Sachs and the chief economist will speak and all these guys will speak. They'll typically give you whatever recommendation yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know, you know what I'm talking about. They'll tell the company on, Exactly right. But, but I like the fact that – I don't know him. I've never met him. I don't know his story. I don't know his background. Yeah. For all I know, it's, he could be, you know, someone who's against capitalism. But Pull up Michael Hartnett. Yeah, but, but all America. I can Let's say is like. the fact that he's selling this the way he's saying – Cars, diamonds, art, and wine. Yeah, there's some integrity in it in what he's saying. That's all. He's I'm saying. saying cars. He didn't I say cards, so. but it, cards. I was, not no. car, I didn't say cards. Cars. Right. Which I mean, I don't know what kind of cars mm -hmm. he's referring well, to. Let he's me tell about you, classic Tom, cars. Tom, why don't you tell us? Tell us how much money is made in in cars, collectible cars, like literally. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy classic. Money. We're oh, talking no, no. about classic cars. Crazy, Crazy money. Right. You know Crazy what you're doing. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand Look, that. You put a line for the S&P 500 and you put a line for collectible Ferraris. His the Ferraris are Hartnett, crushing it. Sam Hartnett. Just crushing it over time. -T -T. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tom. Keep going. You were saying. No, the, 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 if you looked at Ferraris just as a, from the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, just look at those those vehicles and look at them, say, as an S&P 500 and the Ferrari market letter, which is almost Go like to Wikipedia. The, the stock market for that. It is phenomenal, the money you've made on that. And so you can go get smart about it. You don't have to own it. You can, with a consortium, you can own them. But it's just amazing. And by the way, th also, this, this guy, how do we know that he, he was honest with what he said? This is a Business Insider story. So how much of all this did he expect to see in print? Was that an offhand comment that he made talking about inflation? And he makes an offhand comment about cars and stuff, and it puts it in print. And then meanwhile, Business Insider, well, as you said in the story, well, that part was off the record. I wasn't supposed to say that. Yeah. I was talking about the, yeah. the other things. Well, it is what it and, is. And you know what's really interesting about the stock market? I saw something... Somebody asked me, said, look, how do I how do I learn about the stock market? And I said, look, Don't worry stock, about it, mar Sam. stock market's got a risky side, and stock market has a more conservative side that has a lot less risk. And one of the best things I saw was, um, you know, 529s. What's a 529? College it's a college savings, college, yeah. college savings plan. And so who buys into college savings plans? Moms Parents. and dads. Right. Who might not know anything about it, other than maybe they have a pension, but the pension is managed by somebody else. So they may not be retail investors with any sort of knowledge of the stock market. And there's this great analysis that said, the closer your child gets to college, you can just click the box here and we will reduce the risk in your 529. It's sort of like a target date fund that they do. That's exactly case, right. Yeah. But, the, but again, these people don't know what that means. But it was a beautiful explanation mm -hmm. that says, hey, the risk here at kindergarten is going to be here, but we're going yeah. to be reducing the risk the closer they get to college because although there is still risk in this fund, there's still risk of loss, the closer we get to college, we want to turn down the market risk. Mm -hmm. That's our job. That's what you're trusting us to do. And then you read this thing, and I'm like, when I first saw that, I think it was TIA Kreft did it. I said, wow, what a great explanation for parents that lets you walk away saying, okay, this is how the 529 is going to roll. 
And also it was a primer on being in the stock market, but not everything is just throwing darts at the wall. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, I think with anything with investing, much like anything with life, it comes down to risk versus reward, right? So something that I, when I was like, I don't know how to invest. I don't know when I was in my early uh, mid twenties, I learned about the 80, 20 rule. The closer you are to age 20, the more you can have 80% in stocks, 20% in bonds. The closer you are to sure. 80, more closer to 80% bonds, 20% stocks. So depending on your age, like Pat, like said, when he said, uh, when he was in his 18 years old and he took on a lot of debt, you have time to bounce back. You can take on more risk, not dumb risk, not getting arrested, not out there selling drugs, not getting in stupid fights, not anything like that. But the younger you are, can take on more risk. The older you are, if you're in your 80s, you shouldn't be in 100% equities. You should be in more likely 80 or 90% bonds and less stocks. So everything in life comes to risk and reward. And just like the 529 plan, when someone's in kindergarten, they've right. got 18, you know, eight, no, not 18, uh, 12 plus years to for their money to grow. I, I uh, did some basic math there. Versus if they're a sophomore, less time to make their yep. money grow. Well, I'll loop one more thing around NFTs because that's where this part of this segment started is I don't see any difference in what's happening in NFTs, first issues right now, from IPOs. There are IPOs that come out and they're a little bit rust. It's a weaker company, but they have this amazing first day and then they settle and then they all mm -hmm. come back. Some of my last couple of case studies were companies that I showed, hey, well, look, they had this huge, huge pop came down, but then they stuck discipline, 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 growth, 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 profit, 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 and the price comes back up. I think that's, you're seeing that with NFTs. Wow, I love basketball. You know, LeBron James is only making 100 versions of that one dunk his first official NBA dunk, oh my goodness, pop. Well, I think over time, there's still only 100 of those. Mm -hmm. So I think the yeah. value will come back. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.